I've had this little black box sitting on my desk for the best part of two, maybe three months now, and it's genuinely made my job a lot, lot easier. This is the Elgato 4KX external capture card. It might not look like much, but its simplicity is part of the appeal. Stuff like this doesn't need bells and whistles, it just needs to work reliably. As I said, I've been using it for quite a while now, so here are the details and a bit of a long-term review. Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru. So let's dive straight in then with a look at the design and what goodies you get in the box with the 4KX. The card comes packaged in a typical Elgato style box, not much plastic in sight at all. Inside you get the 4KX itself, a 2 meter HDMI 2.1 cable and a 1.5 meter USB 3.2 type C to C cable. One great thing that Elgato have started doing is they're stamping the cable specs into the plastic molding on the ends of the cables. Makes it much easier to identify what cable is what, especially when you've got loads running underneath your desk like I have. The device itself is pretty small and unobtrusive. It doesn't take up much space on a desk at all. It's 112 by 72 millimeters and then just 18 millimeters tall. It's a simple looking device. The case is smooth black plastic, much the same as the previous external capture card devices from Elgato. There's some branding on the top and then on the front next to the model name. The majority of the ports are on the back. There's a HDMI 2.1 in to come from whatever it is that you want to capture and then another HDMI 2.1 for passing through the signal to a display, and then there's a USB-C 3.2 for connection to the device that will be capturing or streaming that signal. Then around the front, there's a 3.5mm audio line in port on the right and an activity light on the left. There's not really much more to say about the design. The 4KX hasn't been made to look flashy or stand out. I get the impression that Elgato want it to blend into a setup and not even be noticed, just sit there and quietly work when you need it to. As for the technical specifications then, and there's not a lot that the 4KX can't do capture-wise, it's been designed to be as plug and play as possible. It'll capture and pass through SDR content at up to 4K 144Hz, and then it'll capture HDR 10 content at up to 4K 30 while passing it through at up to 4K 144. Elgato do a good job of listing the varying supported capture and pass-through resolutions and refresh rates on their website. It's laid out in a table and they've got a pretty simple guide to work out which device that they produce is best suited to your needs. The 4KX also supports a few different ultra-wide resolutions which have been added via a firmware update since release, 3440x1440 and 2560x1080. In terms of device compatibility, it can capture pretty much anything with a HDMI output. You've got PC, Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, handhelds like the ROG Ally and Steam Deck. It will capture Mac and then it will capture iPhone as well. It supports variable refresh rate pass-through. And that pass-through from my experience of using it has no noticeable latency at all. I'll talk more about my use and testing with it in a moment. It'll also handle HDR to SDR tone mapping, letting you play your games in HDR and then capture or stream them in SDR without it looking like a washed out or blown out mess. In summary, it's the most feature complete external capture card that Elgato have ever created. You could even argue that it's more versatile than the slightly more expensive 4K Pro, which is an internal capture card that does support pass-through at up to 8K resolution, but limits the capture to 4K60. As it stands, this is the only device from Elgato that can capture at 4K 144. As far as my use with the 4KX goes, it's been a bit of a game changer, to be honest. Any regular viewers of the channel may have seen some of my pre-built gaming desktop and gaming laptop reviews, and any eagle-eyed viewers will have noticed a change recently. I used to bore you all with chart after chart showing various gaming performance figures and stuff like that. To make things more interesting, I changed to showing actual gameplay footage, which I'm sure you'll all agree is more interesting than a bar chart. Anyway, the 4KX has made that a pretty simple process. I very often have to capture footage of a variety of different devices, laptops, desktops, mini PCs, anything that I might be reviewing at the time. 
In fact, you know what? It's easier for me to show you my setup. As a world leading manufacturer, CyberPower PC UK expertly builds each PC with the largest range of parts available in the UK. We handle all your packages with care and ship them directly to you on next day delivery. Visit cyberpowersystem.co.uk. Starting over on the left, we have the HDMI cable that comes in the box of the 4KX. That's then connected to the HDMI import on the capture card which is here just under my monitor. The HDMI out port is passing that signal through to the 4K 144Hz monitor at the top of my sort of monitor layout. Then over on the right is my PC, which is connected to the 4KX with the USB cable. This setup allows me to place pretty much anything I'm reviewing on the left-hand side of my desk, connect it to the HDMI, and then either use the pass-through to view the system as normal, or view the capture window on my PC and record what I need. It's simple, and that's what I like. I don't want to mess around at the back of monitors and stuff when setting up for a review. I just want to plug it in and start recording. It hasn't been without its issues though, in all honesty, and there were a few bumps in the road up to this point. Elgato only include one HDMI cable in the box, which works perfectly. As for the other one, I already had a variety of 8K HDMI 2.1 cables, but the 4KX, was a bit temperamental with finding one that it agreed with and that it worked consistently with. The same can be said about the included USB-C cable. It works fine, but it's rather short. I originally had my benchmarking set up behind me by that monitor that you can see in the background. This is the opposite side of the room. I wanted to position the 4KX there and then run a USB cable back to my PC for recording. So I ordered a five meter USB-C 3.2 cable and set it up. And while it did work, I did encounter certain inconsistencies and the occasional signal dropout. So I ended up bringing everything back over to my main desk and setting it up like it is now with the Elgato USB cable and a new HDMI 2.1 cable for the pass through. And it's been working fine since then, as I guess Elgato intend. When it comes to actually recording or streaming your content, you can either go with Elgato's 4K capture utility or you can add the 4KX to programs like OBS or Streamlabs. I've added my PS5 as the device being captured. It's running at 4K connected to the monitor at the top through the 4KX with VRR turned on. The simplicity of the setup that I just spoke about continues into Elgato software, the 4K capture utility. There are just two tabs in there, capture and library. Capture will show you the signal coming in to be captured and then library organizes all of your recorded clips. It'll sort stuff in a smart folder, making it easy to find media based on various attributes like 4K videos or short videos or long videos or, and so on and so forth. Clicking into the options cog at the top right takes you to the config and the setup for the device. The general tab lets you turn on Streamlink, which allows you to record a clean video input in this software as well as being able to add the signal to OBS, for example. So you can add stream overlays and effects for a stream and record the gameplay without those added elements at the same time. That's really useful for anyone wanting to stream to Twitch and then make YouTube videos out of clips and stuff. The device tab is home to every setting related to the device, surprisingly. You can change the audio input mode, HDMI color range, EDID mode, which changes where the 4KX gets the information regarding supported display modes and resolutions from. The picture tab allows you to change the brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue that's being applied to the incoming video signal. Recording, that's probably the tab where you'll spend most of the time if you use one of these devices. It's where you can change the folder where videos and screenshots are saved, select what encoder you want to use. The 4KX doesn't encode on device. This is handled by the device that's doing the recording, hence why you can see my graphics card in there. Below that, there's a toggle for enabling HDR recording, changing the recording format and bit rate. And then down at the bottom, you can turn on flashback recording, which caches up to four hours of video in the background to enable you to rewind and record stuff or take screenshots. That could be very useful for say, if you're gaming for a few hours and then rewinding back to the interesting bits and capturing clips of just the stuff that you want so that they're ready for editing. It'll save you scrolling through hours of footage when you're producing a gameplay video. Then finally, we have the microphone tab for switching capture device and changing gain levels along with monitoring settings. There's no doubt the 4K capture utility is simple and easy to use, like most of Elgato software, to be honest. 
and when coupled with a stream deck, it's easy to control on the fly. What's even simpler though is using OBS in my opinion. I've used both for recording systems, but I tend to gravitate towards OBS most of the time. You can just add the 4KX as a video capture device, choose the resolution, and then away you go. If you're looking for a new chair, then definitely go and check out boolies.co.uk. They offer a whole host of gaming and office chairs that come in a variety of different finishes and different colors. So here are a few examples of what the footage captured with the 4KX looks like. We'll start off with Animal Well, a platform game on PS5. This is recorded with the PS5 running and passing through to a 4K 144Hz monitor and HDR is active with HDR to SDR tone mapping enabled within Elgato's 4K capture utility software. So this is the sort of footage that you can get and now moving into a different game with the same setup on PS5, Gran Turismo 7. This is also recorded with Elgato's 4K capture utility with HDR turned on on both the display and the console. And HDR tone mapping is also enabled, otherwise the colors would look very, very washed out. As you can see, it's quite vibrant and quite crisp gameplay. And further from those two examples I just showed, the 4KX is coming more useful for me to record benchmarks and testing and collect data of some of the systems that I've been reviewing. In this instance, we've got it connected to a mini PC and I'm just giving a quick example of capturing a Cinebench benchmark. This is using OBS. This time we're only at 4K 60 Hertz and there's no HDR tone mapping to worry about as this is just an SDR signal. And then finally moving into some gameplay captured with OBS then. This is Marvel Rivals on the PS5. This is back at HDR, but again recorded with OBS. This is passing through to the 4K 144Hz monitor and the signal is being captured at 4K 60. So you can go with either 4K capture utility or OBS and both are very, very simple and easy to set up and get good looking footage. All in all then, the 4KX is a very simple to use and very versatile device. It's changed my system review workflow and simplified the process of capturing video from pretty much anything I throw at it. Picking one up from Elgato will set you back 230 quid here in the UK, which yes, may seem expensive, but I personally have tried cheaper capture cards in the past and they're not as reliable and they don't have the capabilities of the 4KX. So I personally think it's worth every penny, but I do appreciate that 230 quid is not on the cheap side. The only criticism I have is that it can be very, very temperamental with the cables that you use of it. I learned the hard way that it's best to just stick with the cables that Elgato include in the box, but they are a bit small, so it would be nice if they kind of included some longer cables. Once I'd got through that initial setup phase and figured out the best and the simplest way to set it up in my sort of office, it just kind of sits there now and works when I need it to without any faff. The various bits of tech that occupy my desk change very regularly, but until something better comes along, the 4KX will stay where it is, sitting under my monitor, firing up when I need it to, and just working. It's just that simple. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like down below if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to Kit Guru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. And if you go down below the video, we'll find links to our merch store if you want to grab any Kit Guru branded stuff. And then in the video's description, you'll find links to our Discord server, our Patreon page, and our website if you want to check any of that out. Anyway, guys, I've been Matt. This has been my review of the Elgato 4KX external capture card. I'll speak to you later. Look after yourselves. See you later.